Welcome to Wednesday, 3 o'clock my time, whatever time in your world. Glad you could join us. I've got a pretty fun live planned for you all, and I will be honest with you, it's probably the hardest live I've ever done. It's intimidating, it's scary, it's overwhelming. We have a live studio audience. Yeah, you heard me right. There's a whole mess of us in here. It's just like I've never had this many people in my studio. And I've never done live with this many people live with me. It's kind of fun. It's kind of scary. I think you're going to enjoy it. There is um, a group. We've got Ricky. She's running tech, keeping things live, making sure that everything works. Then virtually. We have Susie on YouTube. Hi, Susie. I know we've been emailing back and forth a lot today. It's been a busy day. But now we can both relax and play with flowers. So Susie's with us on YouTube. And then in Facebook, we have Caledonia. So she is in the virtual world greeting you, saying hello, getting to know you, and making sure that you're welcome. Then virtually, David is watching, making sure that we don't screw up. And then in the studio live, we have six students from our current class. It's the last class of the entire year to graduate here at Florida Institute. We go on to our winter break until mid-January, which is that long window. And it's been a fun week. It's probably the most amazing, talented class that I've had in so long. We've just been having a ball. It's just been insane. I go home and I just collapse. I'm like, okay. I can do another day. And then I wake up the next morning and think, okay, here we go. Thank God that they are a wonderful class and creative and fun because they're keeping me going. And that's been a ball. So they are all here with me. And then they'll have questions, I'm sure, that they'll be asking. And Vega from Iceland, many of you know Vega, is monitoring the Facebook page to look for your questions so that she'll verbalize to me if you have something that you want to know. And then Tracy and Marcel are here from Antigua and they're monitoring the YouTube page to look for your questions. So we have new monitors, oh my gosh, and then we have you. And when we talked about this before in the email that had the wrong date on it, oh my gosh, I am so sorry that you're here. So obviously you didn't look at the date, thank you. Uh, but the email that went out said this is your chance to ask questions of real life students. So if you have a question that you would like to hear what their thoughts are or what they have to say, type that in there as well and we'll try to get that all answered for you. So on that note, before we go much further, Ricky prepared a special treat for you, and we'll go ahead and run that live for just a second so that you can see the class that's in the studio with me. Can you believe it? All of us squeezed right on camera. It is amazing. This is the last graduating class of 2022. Pretty darn exciting. And, even more exciting, it is the absolute first class that has ever assembled on camera. How cool is that? So, wanted them to introduce themselves. They're from all over the world. You're going to love it. Let's start on this end. Hi, I'm Marcel from Antigua. Hi, I'm Estelle from California. Hi, I'm Becca from Iceland. Hi, I'm Tracy from Antigua. Hi, I'm Noreen from Atherton, California. Hi, I'm Emily from Seattle. Can you believe it? All over the world, clustered together in the studio, squeezing in. <laughs> now it's your turn. Introduce yourself, let us know where you're from, and say hi to your fellow tulips. So hi from us. Hi, hi, hi tulips. What? Don't you love it? Wasn't that fun? We did that this morning before class got started and underway. It was just so much fun to have everybody squeezed in here. Also kind of scary because we're like, squeeze tighter, tighter. So now you know how big the studio is. It's basically seven people wide. That's it. That's how big we go. And it was grand to have them all come in. Now you know who's watching from inside. 
and they'll be watching for your questions. So definitely type away if you've got anything that you want to know because we've got lots of people here to answer. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways. It'll give you a bigger picture. If you're on your computer, you can go to full screen. If you're on your TV, I'm already li larger than life. Um, maybe you've got both open. I know several of you tell me that you watch the video on YouTube and then you turn around and comment on Facebook and that's totally fine. But I asked the class what they wanted to see. Uh, I said, what should I be doing for the live? Like, and I really had no clue. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. i got to figure out something. And all I could really think about is I've got to teach class. Um, and so they said that they wanted to see Thanksgiving. And I thought, well, we can do Thanksgiving. And they wanted some different ideas using fruits because those of you who have had a class with us, you know, we do a lot of citrus. Um, maybe you saw the Facebook post that I did that showed the pictures of this citrus arrangement they did earlier. And I thought, well, we can do that because I have leftover citrus from class. So I thought, well, we'll do that. If you've taken class, you know what I'm doing, adding a wood pick in, getting it secured. And I got lemons, limes, and tangerines. Citrus is wonderful in arrangements because it holds so incredibly well. Um, sometimes I do two sticks. Sometimes I do one. It sort of just depends on my mood. But the main thing I do is use the Oasis Flow Adhesive and glue that tip. Now, if you do our Tulip Tuesday, if you're subscribed to YouTube and get the alert when Tulip Tuesdays come out, or if you have subscribed to our newsletter so that you get the Tulip Tuesday in the mail, you've already seen this tip because we included it, I think, using apples and pears in a Tulip Tuesday. So yes, you can use different types of produce. It doesn't have to be citrus. I just use citrus in class because I like this color combo for what we're doing. And I also know that it holds about the longest. Now the reason I'm doing the glue is it will seal that puncture wound. And that way I don't have to worry about the fruit starting to dry out and then the flesh scooching away and then it falls off the stick. This way it will stay on the stick and not have an issue. It's going to take just a little while for it to dry. You know the glue, it's all the same. And uh, we had a session Monday, I think it was, where we discussed the different glues. And if you've done online or in the classroom, you had that lecture of which glues to use for what. And so for this particular thing, it's the Oasis Flow Adhesive. That really is the only glue you want to use for this. The others won't give you the bond that you need. So I'm using the Oasis Flow Adhesive Cold Glue. And then I have my turntable. Thank you, Kim. This has been a, such a treat to have. So I actually prepared with the turntable. Container, I prepared ahead of time to save us a bit of time. It's got a plastic liner and then I've got foam. No, I did not tape it. It's wedged in there tightly enough. I just don't think it's necessary. The extra work, and I'm thinking, why would I do that extra work? It just didn't make sense to me. I'm reaching over to grab a little bit of foliage. Oregonia. It is native to the Pacific Northwest. It's only grown in one spot. Uh, right here in Oregon because it's a patented item and so it's only grown here. And I think I've got it positioned well for the close-up. I'm trying to pay attention here. I'm like, yes. oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but you know we've got the new close-up camera that we're trying to make sure we use. And when it's live, you don't know whether it's right or not. I can't see. So I'm just kind of, I think I'm there. So. Oregonia is grown um, by the Tufel family. And it's, it's not right here. I mean, it's just a few miles away, but it's relatively close. And so in Oregon, we use it a lot. But for the rest of the world, it's not used as much just because it's not as abundantly available. But we are so lucky. It just 
is a great variegated product and it holds and it dries and it looks beautiful once it's dried too. So it's one of my favorite foliages to work with. Um, there's a period in the springtime where we can't get it because it has new growth and they have to wait for it to get a little more hardened off before they can harvest. And it breaks my heart because I'm like, oh no, what do I do? I have no oregonia. I can't survive because it's kind of a staple in my world. I just use it more often than not. And I'm using a central binding point. There's your flower school words and just placing it in. Have we had any questions out there at all? What's going on in the world? Not a, okay. They're just saying hello. Everybody's saying hello. Okay, so YouTube is hi is helloing. Heidi, Tess, and Feline. Okay, so we've got some people on there. Heidi, Tess, I heard those two names. Um, and Vega said that Facebook is just checking in and saying hello too. If you've got a question, if you want to know something from the students or something about flower school, ask away. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep playing with flowers because I get to be the lucky one today and do so. I'm just now putting the fruit down in. Grouping some. So my yellow is going to go over there. I could extend it a bit if I wanted it longer. I could add two, but I think I don't need it longer. I think I want to keep my weight down because fruit is visually heavy, and this way it will make sure that it doesn't weigh the arrangement down visually by keeping it close to the bottom. So Karen says here, finally chat, catching you all live again. Karen, welcome. Yeah. Yay. You're watching with all our little girls, Lainey, Rosie, and Leah. Loving watching the flower lady. <laughs> oh, so the kids are with us too. You know, it amazes me how many children do enjoy hanging out with us all because I always think, oh, it's just flower school, but the kids do enjoy hanging out. And then Missy will say, hi, boss. Are those mini cambidium of cut flowers, or did you buy plants and cut them off? On which one? The Michelle, the cambidium orchids. The cambidium Yeah, cambidium. Oh, back here. The yeah. fails. They're actually failing off. I actually bought them cut. Yeah. And don't tell the students, because they're actually theirs, and I stole them from the classroom, <laughs> and they get to use them tomorrow, and get to use them today, so They'll never figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah, I was having some fun as I was going through. Like, okay, well, what am I going to use? And teacher Michelle had some really lovely things last week. And so I stole some of those back because they were still lovely. The solid aster was hers, and she didn't use it last week. I don't know why. Um, so it's a dyed solid aster. So it's got that great autumn hue to it. And you can probably hear that pounding. They've been working on the roof today for some reason. And I don't know what's going on. I saw Eric outside and he was running back and forth. And it's just like, really, people? <laughs> so they're pounding up there. It's like big Sasquatches walking across the roof on top of us. So radiating around, filling it in. Then I really have just been working with textures at this point. So the Arab Morgonia, the solid aster, the smooth of the fruit. I haven't actually added flowers. I've been working more with filler and foliage. But now let's add some flowers. And I think, hmm, which one do I want to do? I think I'm going to, well, Let's take a poll. Which would you rather? The coffee or the voodoo? Yeah. Orange. Mm -hmm. orange. Orange? Orange? Okay, the students vote for orange. <laughs> so, okay. Leanna has a question for me, Leanna. Okay. Um, you use hydrangea as an amateur. Will 
clivia be a good substitute or are the petals too big? Ah, so using clivia instead of hydrangea, I don't think it would work. Personally, I think it is not um, able to give you the support that you need, but I have not tried it. So my challenge to you is try it and then let me know, did it work? Because uh, I really don't know. I've not worked with it to be able to give you an answer on that one. Good question. Okay, question for the students. If you guys aren't asking questions, I'll ask questions. I love them. <laughs> so for the students, and this can be the students in the studio with me, or students online, you, yes, you, of the projects that you did in basic world, as I'm going to do this in two parts, okay? In the projects that you created in basic world design, which was your favorite? So if you're an online student or past classroom student that's watching online now, go ahead and type it in. And then I'm going to come around to students here to see what you say. Anybody want to go first? What was your favorite arrangement that you did in basic course? Anybody? I like the, uh, the uh, landscape linear design. Okay, the landscape linear, that was the one with sunflowers? Sunflowers and the nice. ilex. And well, that's right, you guys have the ilex. Gorgeous and an arch open it. That's right. That was a fun one. And that was a, I don't think I've had any other classes that had the Ilex berries. Because yeah. that just happened to be perfect Ilex berries. Yeah. So we used it. Um, very fun. Any my, others? My favorite was the compost they did. The, the, the free. Is that the foam free compote? Yeah. yeah. That was a beautiful one. The foam free compote is. It lasted very long. Did it last well? Yeah. That's right. You were taking it around to different restaurants and stuff. Yeah. Share of hotels. That's my favorite. <laughs> Give them a share of. <laughs> so that was one of the things that I loved is as Vega would take arrangements, she would share them with restaurants that she had been eating at or with her hotel, various places. And she ended up. Um, getting free food because they're like, oh, well, you gave us flowers, we'll give you food. I love it. I had a student years ago that um, every day after class on the bus ride home, because she was doing a bus out, she would sell her arrangement on the bus so that she had spending money. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so cute. Um, she was a younger woman, it was just very funny. Marjorie says here on Facebook that hand type bouquet was her favorite. Okay, so that was Marjorie? Yeah. With a hand tied? Yeah. Any other favorites? Drake says the bridal bouquet. Ah, his bridal bouquet was huge and beautiful. It was lovely. Okay. Next question? Yeah. Belle Twitchell wants to know, what is everyone's number one tip to gain more wedding clients? Ah, that's a good question, and let's put that out to everybody, both Facebook and YouTube. If you were to share a tip with your fellow tulips, what's the best way you have found to market yourself in the wedding world? That's a good question. And then as you hear some answers, let me know and we'll make sure and get those out there too. I think I'm just about done. I'm going to add a few billy balls. Yeah. Because they'll pick up the round of the fruit at the bottom and carry that through, bring it up through the top. The classroom students are at a disadvantage because they still have two more days of arrangements to go, so um, they haven't done all of them. 
But those of you that have completed, what was your favorite of the advanced class designs? And students here, do you have a favorite of the ones that you've already completed? The casket's great. The linear casket? Yeah. That was fun. Yours turned out very lovely. Thank you. The serpentine was my favorite, I think. The serpentine centerpiece. Okay. So fun to see how different it is. Bigger and yeah, it's just mm -hmm. totally different what I've learned and worked with mm -hmm. back in Iceland. So you can see adding in the billy balls picks up the fruit that I have down at the bottom and mimics their shape and their coloration. Color harmony, pretty much analogous kind of yellows over to oranges to the rusty red. Green I wouldn't count. And so even the green lines I'm not counting, but the yellows to orange would give you an analogous color for me. So you learned that in basic floral design. And so I'm gonna set that one aside. Um, don't forget we will be doing um, pro photos tomorrow. So Ricky will get those edited. I'll share them onto the Tulip People Facebook group first, and then this weekend we'll share them out onto the social platform so that you can all see them. So you'll get a better picture of this one tomorrow. So both Jim, both Jim and Drake, they both say Hogarth was their favorite. The Hogarth? Yeah. Oh, Jim, I saw that you had just submitted um, a Hogarth design online, but I have not seen it yet. I just saw the note come through that you were doing it, so I thought, oh, I've got to go look. But today I've been playing teacher, so I haven't been over to that to take a look. I'm anxious to see what you did. I know you've been putting a ton of work into your studies and even bought a saw. I love that. Um, the class here got to saw on Monday. And I just had to laugh because I was thinking about you dashing out to buy a new saw just because you had to for flower school. <laughs> no, no, no. Diane Murphy asks, are the students enjoying everything? I wish I could have come to Oregon, but one of these days, online was awesome as well. Okay, so that's a good question. They want to know. Are you enjoying it? And even if you're not, say you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talk about what it means. All of it. We are. Absolutely. Very much. Yeah. It's a okay. even better in person. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dream yeah. come true. Yeah. 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 I just, I just love it. True. Absolutely wonderful. It just encourage everybody that has the chance to come, yeah. to come over. and Come to Florence. Yeah. 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 It's oh, the right. best. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fun because Bay has been here now for the month, basically. Uh, from Iceland and so she's actually integrated herself into Portland life and mm -hmm. made friends and got to know people mm -hmm. and then Tracy and Marcel have been here just for the week because they did their basic online which a lot of people do that combo they do the basic online and then come for one week because they can't take an entire month out of their life uh, and you know that's that's where it is kind of fun to get to have that one-on-one -on -one time with the people in the classroom and yet to have had the full education at home as well. So kind of you get to win both ways. Um, another topic that they gave me was foraging. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have time to go foraging, I'm teaching. <laughs> but I thought, well, there's always something to forage. And then somebody said, oh, and the birch, we love the birch. And we have this sitting over on the wall to use as like a photo prop. Uh, and so it's been used many a time. It's from teacher Michelle's farm at. Uh, she <laughs> chopped some trees down that were dying and then brought them in so that we could play with them. So thank you, teacher Michelle. And then I foraged through my shelves to find this bowl. Uh, we are loving that. And bowl. it's just, it's a glass mm -hmm. bowl. And I haven't used this one on live before, I don't think. Um, I don't know where it came from or why I have it. I have two of them and they're heavy, they're beautiful, and I like the fact that it's got a deep water reservoir, and it's so strong 
that I can easily put the stick on it and not feel like it's going to blow, you know, knock it over. I tried it on a couple of other things and it was not heavy enough, so that didn't work. Then I decided I wanted to do foam free on this one, so I gathered some coral netting because I need some support in there to put my materials. So doing the floral netting, and then I'm just going to slide that in. But, and I'm not sure that you can see it on camera, I checked it before I came in to be on live, and you can see the wire. So it doesn't work to just do it with just the wire. So before I do that, I use tea leaves. And I had ordered in tea leaves. These are weapons. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay. I was expecting tea leaves, um, but I got tea leaves. And it turns out it's kind of perfect for this. I thought, well, that will be good. Uh, it's very, very stiff. So I need to clean off the back side, removing some of the main midrib. So they're all over the bowl, and Jim Doyle, he said, send it to me, I want it for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, oh my gosh. I have to send you the, the Halloween tree, and now this bowl. <laughs> I'm going to have to get every, a list made of everybody's Christmas shopping from my warehouse. <laughs> So I'm just kind of cleaning this off a bit so that it's a tad bit more pliable. And I'm doing exactly what I tell students never to do, mm -hmm. cutting towards myself. Could you see I'm doing that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who taught that? No. Cut it away. And I wonder why workman's comp bills are so high. <laughs> now I can place this in. And that will conceal all my wire. But I need two of them to get it the rest of the way around. And I'm going to make it easier on myself and just cut off that end because I don't need that much. That way I don't have to worry about shaving as much. And then placing it in. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of secure it make it easy. You know, some people say doing staples and glue and such is cheating. I think, you know what, you just do whatever makes your life easy, because if you don't, life's too short. And if it's going to bother you that I cheated and put a staple in it, oh no. <laughs> then I've got to just kind of hold it all in here. Until I get my stick back up. There we go. Then push it back out. Staple on this side. There we go. And adjusting the stick so that I have options on both sides. Then I can put floral netting, sliding it in. And I'm sliding it clear over to this side so that I've got some netting over there. I'm going to take another piece. I'm sliding it down in. It's not going to fall out. I've got to make sure it all stay in place. There we go. Grabbing a bit of water. It's pre-mixed with flower food, so that that's all set. Roxy says, "Oh, lovely, and that's not a stick. That's a trunk." <laughs> 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 I do things big, you know, sometimes. So you can see it looks good from both sides. And it is a trunk. 
I almost bought, brought in two of them. I thought, okay, Leanne, well, you're going overboard. Mm -hmm. One is enough, so I just brought the one in. Then I can make decisions about what I want to add in here. And I did have some foraging from the other day. This was from a tree that is down the road here, hmm, maybe three blocks away. I walk past it on my way home. You listen to it. Doesn't that sound wonderful? And I just thought it was so cool. And I just decided that the branches would be better in my possession than they were on the tree. So I took my pruners with me one day on the way home and just sort of helped myself. Um, but you know, sometimes you just gotta do that. But the good news is we just had a windstorm. I know that was bad news for some people. But the good news is we just had a windstorm. And there are so many branches down on the ground now and foliages that have just blown out of the trees. These are God's gift to the designer. <laughs> and so you can do tons of foraging right now. That's, you don't even need your pruner. And you don't have to run. Because if you don't have to run, you're I always figure it's the wind angels coming through to protect us and give us cool stuff. <laughs> Someone should benefit from it, you know? <laughs> then I'm going to decide if I want to leave this long and over, I'm going to try it. I'm not sure. We may end up moving it, but I'm going to place it so it just kind of comes in. I've got to find a good spot. And then you guys keep me posted if it needs to move or if it's kind of cool there. I think I've got another branch here. Yeah, you have a few answers um, um, in terms of the wedding question, question from Marianne. Um, they say get to know the venues and wedding planners. They're usually free. And when you find the ones you want to work with, they will refer you forever. Okay. So that's a great that tip. Diane. That, so Diane on YouTube said to get in touch with the venues and the wedding planners. Build a relationship and once you get started with them, you have that relationship built, they will refer to you forever and that is so true. And so much of what we do in business now is built on relationships and if you take the time to do that, you can actually build a super successful, viable business, all because they're your friends. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I love about the floral industry. Is we really do just become friends with each other. It's a pretty wonderful, wonderful industry. Okay, so you can see I've got it on both sides. I'm going to leave that one up there. I just think that's kind of weird and I kind of like it. So it's going to stay there. I'll save these because I'm sure someday I will need them. Uh, I was actually originally thinking, and I was saving these, but I'll peel them back out and save them again, um, to put, I thought if I had a really long, long tray, no water, no flowers, just a long, long tray, like a bread tray type thing, and then do a mixture of different types of pods and cones. I thought those would be so pretty in there. Uh, that would have messed, messed in with them nicely. Now you'll recognize these with the little rhinestones. They're left over from my Halloween Live, and I thought, oh, let's do that. And then Teacher Michelle used this one in her arrangement, was it last week? Um, where she used floral clay on an anchor pen so that she could set it in. And I think, thank you, Teacher Michelle. I threw your arrangement away today. And I saved your pumpkin. And I'm putting that in. And then this one was just sitting on my desk, and it was so pretty. And instead of floral clay, I used the U glue strip, a half of a strip, and put it on to hold the anchor pen. And I'm going to use in before I deal with flowers because I want them heavy at the bottom. I don't want them on top of flowers that would smash them. But by putting them in now, I can place them easily. 
Another one with rhinestones, another one with rhinestones, you know, that whole Halloween segment. I think I had four or five of those. Anchor pins.
What did you? How did you find us, Becca? Well, I found the found the first on YouTube. Okay, so YouTube first. Yep, and, and that was what five years ago. Oh yeah, something about that. It was around the time that you were first starting live on Facebook, and I've been following ever since. Okay, and Estella, how on did you YouTube. Find it? YouTube? Yes. Okay. Emily? Um, I Googled Far School and um, this came up um, first and um, the reputation preceded it. And, you know, just um, one of the top design schools in the country and it was an obvious choice for me because I'm close to Portland and I'm from Seattle, so um, it just worked out. Excellent. So thank you, Google, because mm -hmm. we've been enjoying having you here. And Noreen, how did you find it? Uh, through the Facebook page. Facebook, okay. So the Facebook page. So this is our marketing research. I love it. I didn't find <laughs> that. But thanks for the question. And how did you guys find us? Auntie Google helped me as well. <laughs> so it was, she led us on to um, Facebook and to the YouTube lives. Okay, so that's how they found us. It looks like Google, Facebook, YouTube, so the digital universe out there. And then what made you choose? It sounds like you had researched the reputation and such. Anybody else have a thought of what made it? Well, my reason for choosing to come here was to learn how you do things here in America because because we, win, we work with the same materials, but we, the technique is different, and I'm learning way more techniques that I've otherwise not learned, and how you do the arrangements over here. So from Iceland to America, it's, yeah, there's different techniques, and that's the, one of the reasons I want to come here, and yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing, I had a couple holes that I didn't like, and so I'm just stuffing in some of the foraged bindings, and I'm going to sit off there. But you can see, I could have done it without the orchids, and just had the forage, and it would last the entire season, because there's nothing to dye. The gourds are going to hold, the branch obviously is going to hold, these are dry, they're going to hold. But to make it extra special, let's say you did this up for every day with just the dried forage things, and then whenever you have a party, pop in a few fresh flowers, all of a sudden it makes it super extra special. So, kind of fun. And now tomorrow we'll get a picture of it, then we'll pull all the orchids out so that the students can have them. Um, but for now, you got to see them. What do you think? Do you like this one? Yeah. Kind of different for me. Normally I'll put a big old stick in the middle of everything. They are loving it over Facebook. Yeah. Facebook yeah. liked it. And yeah. it. So there we've done the fruit that was requested. We did the foraged and the trunk. I'm just going to say the stick, but the whole trunk. Um, and I'm going to move this aside. So give me one second. It's going to be very heavy, so I'm going to be very careful and move it away. Diane, on YouTube, on YouTube says, very cool. Oh, great. Thanks, Diane. Also from YouTube, we have a question from Christine. Did any of you students get to go to the flower market yet? Yeah, no. Yes. <laughs> I sneaked, me and Kenny from the basic, we snuck into the flower market. <laughs> and it was amazing. <laughs> it was so big. Yes, I got a chance to go there. We have um, our flower market here is a closed market. Um, they have a badge system and a gatekeeper, and you are not supposed to go. But Becca and Kenny just like quit. And I thought, how great is that? What's the worst that can happen? They say, go home. Uh, and so they were able to look around and see. We do have a really, really, really nice small market. We are fortunate here. Um, we have big main wholesale, uh, Bill Doran, Frank Adams, and May Ash. Which, that's wonderful. I'm not belittling that at all. but. The very best part is in the center, 
they have a farmer's market, basically. It's all local growers that have just really cool stuff. That's where I was able to get the orchids. It's actually a person that just grows them right here and was selling them, and they were so pretty. I thought, oh, I need those. Um, I'm going to hold this off the table to try to fill it because it's a little tiny hole. And this container is another one that I don't think I've ever used on live. And I don't know where it came from, so don't even ask. And I don't know why I have it, so don't ask. But I love it, and I believe, I think, I don't know for sure, I think that I got it at a houseware store. And it's something that has little cubby holes, like you could put napkins in one part, and maybe knives in a part. You know, you do cutlery and such. I believe it is something to do with the kitchen, that you would just put things in there. Mm -hmm. um, but it happens to hold three bases pretty easily. There's little dividers in here. I could have shown you that before I... Does that show? Ricky, maybe if I move it over here so they can see the dividers? Yeah, okay, so there you can see the dividers. And then I just have three different vessels that happen to fit. This is bittersweet, which um, used to be super abundant roadside. It was a weed. Uh, and then thanks to all of the herbicides and chemicals and such that have been sprayed along roads, it died back. And we couldn't get bittersweet for a long time. It was really totally unavailable. Um, and then people have started growing it, plus we've got a more conscientious use of herbicides and such. I think we've gotten better about not using things that are maybe a little bit toxic. Uh, not to say that we aren't still using some. I would love to say we aren't, but I'm sure that we are in some places. But uh, it's starting to become available again, and it is so wonderful. And I'm just going to feed it in here, and then try to get it into this vessel. How am I going to do this? Because that's where I want it to be. Well, maybe, nope. I'm going to have to go this way, put it in, and then put it back in there. So that's the problem of live. You have to figure it out while you're standing here with the whole world watching and go, I want it there, but how do I get it there? Then a um, little bit of binding wire, because this will allow me to make it stay where I want it to be. So just a bit. And then flashing it around. So, Lori, I think your coffee, coffee cup is empty. So she wants to fill it up as soon as possible. <laughs> you know, that was my problem today. Um, I had a very busy day. I had a very busy day. And so I started at 4 a.m. this morning. And by the time I even got to the classroom today, I'd already had four shots. And then I was a little bit early and I had time, so I had some more. And then about noon, I started to crash a little bit. So I had some more. And so I only did one shot in the thermos. And so, yeah, it's, there is still coffee in here. But purposely, there's not a lot because I think I have over caffeinated today. But you know how sometimes you just start and, and you can't stop? Well, that was my day today. Okay. Now I'm just kind of bringing this around and letting it wind. And then I'm going to secure it over here. Over on YouTube, we have A. McGrath, who is a longtime watcher, but it is their first time joining live with us today. Oh, wow. I'm glad you got to do live. You know, live is so different than on replay just because you get to be able to comment and talk to your fellow tulips. And then this live today has got to be the weirdest ever because we have so many people in the studio. It's like, oh my gosh. But it has been kind of fun, just a little different. 
um, probably not going to become a habit because it's a little more stressful for me, but um, at the same time, it's been just a little different. It makes me be more on my toes, that's for sure. Um, okay. And I'm trying to be very careful with how I bend this because I don't want it to break. And it's, it's got a little bit of pliability, but not a lot. So I'm just kind of playing around with where I can maybe get it to come back. Because it goes too far out, and I don't want that. I want it to come back into the design. Maybe that's what I'll do, is just kind of fasten it right there. Um, yeah, How does, does that look good on camera? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Also, Dennis from Facebook says that your box is patterned after a 19th century toolbox, maybe carpentry or woodworking. Well, Lord knows that I'm a woodworker. <laughs> or, 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 or. Um, so, okay, so it's a patterned after an antique toolbox. Well, I kind of like that story. So next time I use this, I'll say, oh, and this is my replica of an antique toolbox. Yeah. Thank you for researching that and sharing that. I appreciate it. I always learn things from you all, and that's what makes my life so much fun. I'm going to turn this around again so you can see it from the other side, how everything just winds and moves around, and I will answer the question that Michelle would have asked me, and I would have said, uh, I don't know. Um, what principle did I just create? Because she asked me that after I made an arrangement that you might have seen me do with Vine. And she said, oh, Leanne, what principle did you just implement? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Do you guys know what principle it is? It's rhythm, maybe. It's rhythm. That is it. So when teacher Michelle had asked me that, I'm like, I don't know. I turned it over to the tulips, and you all came up with rhythm. and my students, being the brilliant, brilliant tulips they are, came up with rhythm. So make sure, I know I didn't mention it earlier, but I better do it now. You gotta stay till the very end. Don't check out early. I know we've got 10 minutes left. Don't check out early, because I got one more surprise for you. So you gotta hang out to that full hour. So if you know somebody that left, tag them, call them, text them. Send a smoke signal, whatever it takes, because you want to be here at the end. So we have another surprise. So then I'm going to go ahead and finish with just tucking in a few things. Um, let's see, what do I want? Weeks ago, I don't remember when. Weeks ago, we had these sort of antique yellow carnations. They're kind of mustardy. And these four were broken. And so they just got stuck in the cooler on the shelf and never got used. But I thought, for this, they were just perfect. Um, so I grabbed that. And then I had two of uh, the coxcomb solution that were broken. Uh, this is what it's like when it has a stem, but these were broken and I thought, you know, they're almost dry. They're going to be just fine. So going ahead and using these, even though they're not going to drink, they're just going to exist. Um, I can tuck them in and use them yeah, that's where they go. But I need to put them together because if I set them in one at a time, they're just going to fall down to the bottom. So I'm going to use my pick machine and just cock it forward, clamp it back, and capture. And I didn't capture, so try that again. See if I get it this time. There we go. Now they're combined and I can place them in and they just won't fall directly to the bottom, okay? So it gives that little bit of color there. Then I could take one more, and its stem is long enough that I can actually just set it and the stem will hold it up. Yeah, hearts and the lights are just flowing in from Facebook over oh. what you're doing over there. 
good. So, you know, the um, movement from front to back, we talked about in class a lot Monday and Tuesday, and so I've done that now with my cusp comb, just to carry you from front to back. And then go back with my carnations. They do need water, so I'm setting them into the vase. Just tucking them. We did the orb lesson today with how many carnations does it take to <laughs> fill a four and a half inch orb. So those of you that suffered through that in class before know that this <laughs> class did it today too. And as always, the guess was far fewer than what it actually took. Um, but we made it, it turned out pretty, and then tomorrow we'll be pulling those carnations out and using them for something else, repurposing them. Okay. Then I gotta decide what else to put in here. And the students had used ranunculus on Monday, and these were left over. You know, how can you have left over ranunculus? But, and I thought, wouldn't that be pretty? Because they can just kind of come up out of this vase. I'm hoping I can fit three in. I don't know for sure, because it is such a small hole. But let's pray. Say, say a prayer to the gods of flowers. Ah, it fit. Yay. And then I put it so that it goes on both sides of the handle. See how the handle is here, and I've got one in the back side and two in the front. Because again, I want to create depth. I don't want it to be flat. I want it to have a little bit of movement. Can't use him because he just doesn't fit. Maybe. Let's see. It might fit. So. Jim has an answer on Facebook. Okay. It's how many carnations? Ah, uh, what did he say? 45 to 50. <laughs> <laughs> Students, was that about right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Love Yet>. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. You are so true. You must have gone to flower school. <laughs> So now I've got my last spot over here to fill in. And you can see how I've gradiated the color from the yellows over to the reds, kind of mimicking the orangey yellow that's winding through, giving it a nice rhythm pattern. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish it with, hmm, let's see. The question is, do I want to go to an orange, so that I really pick up the orange of the bittersweet, or do I want to go back, similar to the yellow, and come back out like that, or maybe I could do both, or bringing it into an actual yeah. brown. I'm thinking the brown, what do you think? Yeah. Is that what it is? Okay, there we go. Design by consensus. And if I'm gonna do that, then I need just a little bit to help it. So I'm going to use some of the beach. So Jim is saying here that he would like to see the arrangements that made by students that learn floor design in their home country and then uh, one of them is answering him and is like, that would be an interesting competition to see. Yeah. You know, well, that's one of the things I love about the Tulip People Facebook page is that so many students put in pictures of work that they've done on their own in their businesses or for their home or whatever, and we get to see what's there. And I've often thought it would be fun to do a competition that we got to choose, you know, which student did da 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 da, da the best. But I haven't figured out a way to make sure that the voting stayed fair. Because, you know, um, if everybody just says, you know, you count the number of likes, well, if you have somebody that has a really big family that they tell their family to go in and vote for them, they automatically win. And so I haven't found a way. So if any of you have an idea of how we could Produce and then 
do it fairly and honestly and cleanly because I don't want it to ever have any chance that it got abused. If you have any ideas, I'm open to listening because um, we used to do a competition down at the Chinese Garden that many, many, many tulips participated in. And that was grand fun. And that one, we actually had judges that would go through, um, three to five judges, so that it was totally impartial. They didn't know who did what. They didn't know which design belonged to whatever. And it really was a wonderful way to see such extreme creativity. It was just really, really, really fun. So, okay. Any last minute questions or comments? Because we're pretty much at the end here. And I promised you one more little surprise. So I'm going to turn this around so you can see that. I just added in one more coxcomb to finish. Again, we'll take pictures. We'll get them posted on social. Then um, next week, we continue on with Thanksgiving. It's our last. Autumn centerpiece, Thanksgiving, inspiration, so forth, so on, because we won't be doing a live stream the week of Thanksgiving, because everybody will be on holiday with their families, and so nobody will be here to run the tech or to be on the live. So next week will be the last one for November, and then we'll be back after Thanksgiving. But as promised, one more little treat. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Caledonia. Thank you to the students for making it all fabulous. Thank you for you guys joining me. And I want you to get out there and do something you love right now, but wait till Ricky's done. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.